Those working from home. Games, toys, and other activities. But I need to read the invitational to keep your kids and games. Stay safe, everyone. We are open for you. At a time like this, good sanitation and cleaning is crucial. Delta Supply sells car shop cleaning equipment for washers, steam cleaners, and misters for hospitals, factories. I found the damn DCJ report. Uh -huh. So, when we're coming in. And we're chit chatting. Two, okay, I kept can one, talk about the the oil thing, and then okay. I can just mention it Where and then ask it? you. I have a copy, okay. and then you could just I go into. This morning, asking me to get a copy. You can borrow some photo. Oh no, I have a hat. I saw a copy. I can send it to you. Okay, great. And then you can just go into your I what's on your mind. School fees. Yeah, man. I'm with you with that. Too. We shouldn't be paying any. We're not going to school. We're going to school. Exactly. So a lot of people just are sending their kids to summer Like what? What's the problem? So I got the office yesterday, and I was like, yeah. and I stuck it back in the car. Run back the, the report. Okay. Bring us in. Yeah, I'll start. Good morning to you. If Patria K was here, she'd say, wake up, wake up, wake up. <laughs> I kind of miss her now. But good morning, Beth. Yes, it is my pleasure. I'm Kalila Reynolds. And I'm Daniela Archer. Good morning to all the jerk fan people. I know you are not looking for trouble, but I know that seems not so right because it's really hustle. But to all of you, thank you so much for the cook shops and the restaurants and mm -hmm. all that you're doing. We still like the fried chicken and we're looking forward what, to... Why all this talk about food coming so early in the morning? Jerk and fry and food. at 6.30. It's food. It's Kalina we're talking about here. That's, Do you have a problem? By the way, wasn't I promised to <laughs> cake? You see? Was, Jermaine, where's the cake? <laughs> you Jermaine, opened up this... You walked right I, into this. Yeah, man, I'm going to walk right out with Jermaine. Listeners, as Daniel. you would know, this is my first time working with the lovely Daniel Archer. Welcome to the team. It's my, I finally get the opportunity to tell you that in person. You, Welcome to the nationwide... To the big show! It's a pleasure Welcome to, be to the big show, oh, Madam Danielle. Oh, boy, it's, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's nice to be by your side, man. Good. And a pleasure good. looking forward to it. And I did agree that... We should have cake, but Jermaine says there's no cake in the studio. So, don't because worry. Because you were supposed to bring Don't worry, but he wants cake too, but he doesn't want to admit that oh, he's going to eat the cake. No cake in, oh, it's not allowed in the studio. Yeah. So, don't worry, I said, you get it. Don't worry, I said, the, the, the chocolate cake is, is, is there. excuses now? It's not an excuse. <laughs> it's an explanation. You're not, you're not buying it? <laughs> yeah. So you want cake? We oh, want cake. We we want cake. Okay. We all right. Want all right. Cake. All right. All right. You're on the spot. We will not buy the cake. I bake you the cake. How that work? How that work? Bake me a cake. I bake you the cake. How that work? Lovely. All right. See Even there? better. Wow. All right, guys. Live on radio. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I get this commitment. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Commitment. Listeners, you can watch us live on YouTube at youtubecom slash nationwide 90 fm I'm also live streaming on my channel right now. And so you can see me and lovely Daniel Archer. You know, the few things on my mind this morning, I didn't hear that interview with uh, with Fable Williams mm -hmm. last evening on Cover Story. I heard excerpts of it in the news, and now I need to go back and listen to the podcast, because wow. But the interesting thing about it is we started that discussion in this morning, mm -hmm. and we got some clarity yesterday. Upon hearing the interview, I ran for my copy of the report because you will remember that that report came out some time ago. And I looked at, I think it was page 31, and the Auditor General mentioned, with regards to ex refinery prices, we note that market adjustment is a discretionary value that Petrodam's pricing committee determines. However, owing to absence of minutes for meetings, we could not determine whether the market adjustment was always determined in a transparent manner. Mm. <laughs> so clearly, there is much food for thought in respect of whether or not the pricing. How what year did that, that report come? That was last year. Was last year. Yeah, last year. Oh, so the December, December twenty eighteen. Yes, yes, yes. Well, yes I said last year, two years. Yeah. December eighteen, December twenty eighteen, and we had all that discussion last year when it came out. And I think where we need to go is to really jump in and find out. How to make it transparent? How is it that they come to that? Perhaps have a look at the minutes. Where are those minutes? And assess how it is that this We've price... We've been talking about this pricing mechanism for years. years. For years. But that is not officially what's on your mind. You no, it's not. 
actually what is on my mind this morning is this issue of school fees for the summer term particularly for the prep schools so i've been talking to some neighbors i've been seeing the comments online on facebook and twitter and parents are not happy so daniel i, I don't know you very well i'm just getting to know you now you have to get yeah, yeah. yeah you have children that's a trick question because my nieces and nephews count as if i disown them on error i will not get any more so <laughs> technically i got four you pay school Five. fees for any of them no okay so and do any of them go to prep school no they are all in that okay okay so so you're not in this boat no, right now but we, we can do this by mm -hmm. you understand what you're going through mm -hmm. because i've seen the comments and one of the things i've had to ask is do you pay full school fee now that you're doing this thing online seeing that you're not utilizing the structures and the play fields and persons aren't coming to schools how how do they apportion if they do how do they do that so these are some of the issues that we're going to be talking about right now because i i have my older daughter she went to prep school no longer there the fees are not cheap <laughs> it's quite pricey it's a sacrifice for many parents who want to give their child that type of education and so now the online learning for the summer term started officially yesterday wednesday april 22 although physical locations for schools remain closed until may 31 that's the directive from the government so for regular for for primary schools that's not in the sense of school fees an issue because they don't pay school fees mm -hmm. but for preparatory schools they have had to make a decision as to okay what happens in relation to fees for the summer term because they still do have teachers to pay and that would be the majority of their expense prep school teachers don't get paid by the government so those teachers have to you know those schools have to rely on the income that they generate from parents through fees to pay their teachers but on the other hand they don't have other expenses mm -hmm. right now they don't have electricity bill to pay or at water. least not the, not the not the big bill right they don't have water they don't have maintenance costs mm -hmm. ancillary staff to pay they still use chalk in, in schools now or is it uh whiteboards now I don't uh, know. yes <laughs> in the age of the, 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 the millennials where we have tablets i don't know but it's a good question but they don't have those teaching supplies but you would still need it because remember kids play they do use material so maybe it is that they also have to get material to distribute to the class they're going to distribute it no I'm they're going to go house to house to each I'm child house some, and, and distribute some teachers i'm understanding i've seen the messages coming in some people say some teachers have had packages not all schools have provided packages but some classes seem teachers seem to prepare packages to give to them and some schools have actually put fees in half which school is that? Rainbow Land. I don't know how correct that is, but the message I just got was that Rainbow Land has cut their fees in half. In half? Mm -hmm. Okay, because the reports I'm seeing is that the school fees, most of them have been discounted, but not by very much. Mm -hmm. By prices, uh, discounts range between 5% and maybe about 30% at, at some other schools. And I've questioned, and lots of parents are questioning those discounts, especially like the mega 5%. So, because five percent. So, how you calculate that? Does it just take into account? You ask. <laughs> I I don't know how they come up with five percent because for one, parents end up having to carry out much of the instructions themselves, playing the role of teacher, mm -hmm. especially for the younger children. So, I saw a letter from Hillel parents on Change.org. You know, Hillel is one of the pricier prep schools out there. And Hillel is offering just 5% discount. Their fees range from 224000 a term to $448,000 a term. That's nearly half a million dollars a term. They're offering a 5% discount. So work with me. And so oh, let, me, let me just tell you about the letter from the parents now. So the, letter, the parents have written a letter on change.org protesting this discount. And one line of it says, the school is essentially asking parents to incur precisely the same cost for significantly reduced services. And I think that's a, that's a very important point. You're not offering the same level of service as you did last term and the previous terms, the same level of service that you usually do. You don't have the same expenses that you usually do. So what justifies almost the same cost as you usually charge? 
what does the bad check? I'm sorry, I don't understand how you put to the five percent. Mm -hmm. Because when you do fees, one would assume that you tabulate the expenses. So these are the costs that we're going to incur in giving you the service, and this is the value of my time. Mm -hmm. When you add that, that comes up to what is the price. If it is that you're taking off five percent, are you taking off five percent because you are pandering to the parents to say, I recognize that we're not all here? Or is it that you still expect that you must collect the same amount of money even though you give less services? Mm -hmm. Who regulates that? Is it regulated? I don't know if it's regulated. And are these schools for profit or is it But it's a private. To, yeah. so if, and, and I think that's where we need well, to have that conversation. You can, I don't know if it's a... But being private and being for profit don't necessarily, aren't necessarily the same thing. Well, let's work it out then. Let's, 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 let's accept that private, you pay more because you're expecting to get a better service or a higher quality of service, so you're going to be paying more. But in realistic terms, nobody does anything unless they can make a profit. Mm -hmm. So they're going to want to make a profit from it to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. you know, when you think about it, and you have, I think these schools are part of a private school, they have a private school association, and there are some schools that have not been able to collect school fees because there are still people who are not paying. Mm -hmm. Is and it that brings me to another point. So on the issue of people not paying, so I see a conversation happening now among parents and even in having discussions with friend, friends of mine who have children in, in prep school. A lot of them are saying, we're just not bother. We're not going to pay that fee for the summer term when our, when our child is not getting the attention they deserve or need at this time from the school. They're trying to do Zoom classes and all of this, but some of them are not consistent. Some of the teachers are not off with the mm -hmm. technology of Zoom and they're not comfortable teaching via that medium. And the parents themselves feel like they have to be doing most of the instruction. So why am I going to pay you 75, 90, 100, $200,000 for a service that I'm not really getting? So a lot of parents are now saying, I'm just not going to send my child to school. Well, I'm just not going to pay the fee. I'm just not going to have them registered for the summer term. There are perhaps two sides to it if I'm attempting to be reasonable from the perspective of looking at you're still giving time and perhaps there's still material that has to be prepared to be scratched to the, the students and the parents to make sure that it's done in accordance with the standards that are expected. So I would appreciate perhaps they would be able to come out and say this is how we are going to quantify the expense, but whilst you're having this discussion, Pal, I'm still troubled by the reality that there are some people who are not even in a position to discuss paying fees mm -hmm. because even if they are able to put the monies together to send their child to a private school because they want them to have a better education, they may not have the money to pay the light bill or the internet bill mm -hmm. to be able to go online. Especially in these times mm -hmm. when a lot of people are losing their jobs too. So that's another thing that the parents are complaining about, that we are on limited incomes right now if any income at all, and you're still charging us the same fee. But Daniel, it raises another issue if you're going to be deciding not to send your child to school for the summer term, or not to enroll them, I should say, in school, since it's not a physical location. How do you then assess the child, well, the child's performance for the school year, and decide if the child moves up, advances to the next grade for I, the next school year? I think what they should do is... There is a homeschool program. I do believe you can log on to it online. I don't remember what the page is, portal. But we do have a strong homeschooling facility here in Jamaica. And I think if you're going to elect having garnered that experience from homeschooling your children now mm -hmm. and recognizing that it is something you want to continue to do, it would be wise to log on to that platform, get that information, and perhaps see if you can align what you're doing at home now with what they want you to do and I then you have to get approval to, to, to homeschool. So, but I did check on the Ministry of Education's website yesterday because these are types of questions that I started thinking about. So I checked on their website to see if the syllabus is available online. And yes, it is because, like you said, there are people who've homeschooled their children even before this. So you can go, listeners, to M-O-E-Y dot G-O-V dot, sorry, slash curricula that's M-O-E-Y dot G-O-V slash curricula, C-U-R-R-I-C-U-L-A. And that is where you can find the curricula or the curriculum 
for your child grade by grade. So they have each grade level's curriculum on their website. Yes, Daniel? Can we just throw something to you, though? I'm thinking about the teachers and the fact that they're not going to the schools themselves. Mm -hmm. So if we're still paying the fees, does this mean that the schools give the teachers an additional apportionment for utilizing their own internet and electrical services? I heard JTA President Owen Speed saying that teachers were promised something like that, at least public school teachers. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the private school but arrangements are. Clearly, the private schools will be on top of that because mm -hmm. the teachers would know. <laughs> I'm a, I am You would to think. Yeah. In, in the best interest and being more than reasonable that they would put that up there because then at the end of the day, though, let's be fair to the teachers. They are the ones who are also using their resources yeah. and they're also giving their time because through Google, and the Google classes, they do sit there trying to monitor and trying to share and answer questions, perhaps even more so now than they did before, because teach some parents but are the ones that are doing it, because not all teachers, from what I understand, are doing it. Some grade levels haven't had these, uh, haven't had the engagement at all with their students. They just haven't had classes. So let me give you that website again. If you're interested in actually homeschooling your children formally, the website moey.gov slash c-u-r-r-i-c-u-l-a you can download your child's curriculum guide from that website and maybe the ministry of education should go a step further and, and put some sample lesson lesson plans on their website too because the curriculum tells you what the students need to learn but mm -hmm. it doesn't tell you how to teach it <laughs> or even where to find resource materials and right now i think a lot of parents need that type of guidance yeah so that's what's on my mind this morning issues in education <laughs> Outside. Resolve your conflict peacefully with restorative justice. Call 876 906 4000.